Hello, hello, and welcome. This is going to be kind of like a two-parter. In October, instead of doing Inktober, for the past few years I've been doing what I've been lovingly dubbing as Dogtober, and I've been doing a lot of stuff themed around dogs. This year, I decided I wanted to do some illustrations where I took folklore and mythological dogs and just myths and stories about various monster dogs and mythological dogs from around the world and made it look like they were maybe in a dog show and that they were all winning best in show over the course of years. <laughs> so I decided that I was just going to jump into that and I've been researching dog myths and folklore and legends and all of that type of stuff from around the world and illustrating all of these different dogs in like kind of a cute fun style and imagining kind of what this world would be, this dog show world from behind the veil where the handlers are not human, they're like ghosts and vampires and demons and goblins and stuff <laughs> since this was for October spooky season and all of the dogs are kind of just different, not real dogs. <laughs> I do want to make a very specific disclaimer. <laughs> I want to say that none of these are historically accurate. These are all just inspired by and also my artist interpretation of different myths and legends and stories of various dogs from around the world. The handlers themselves, their fashion may be inspired by the location of the lore, but they're not historically accurate. In fact, they are reimagined in a more modern and professional type of fashion style, something that a handler would be wearing at a dog show, because a lot of the times handlers wear more conservative professional outfits. So I wanted to do the same for these spooky handlers. <laughs> also, all of the stories I was researching had very limited information. A lot of the times it seems like this was passed down orally as opposed to a lot of written information. So for some of these, it was really, really hard to find historical depictions or historical and accurate information regarding all of this dog lore. So I had to basically make do with a lot of the information I could find. And lastly, I want to point out that this was done for a challenge in October where I was trying to do one every day. So I had very, very, very limited time to spend on researching, on studying and everything. I really only had like an hour tops to research and then maybe like an hour or two to to complete these images. So please don't take any of these depictions as me saying that this is what exactly they looked like or this is historically accurate because it is not <laughs> by any means. This is my <laughs> interpretation of these fun dog lore myths and what it would look like if there was a fake dog show, you know, something spooky and fun. So this is just supposed to be done for fun. This is not any sort of historical or like super accurate depiction of anything. So if I've gotten any information wrong or anything along those lines, please forgive me. I try my best, but yeah, this is the best I could do with the information I was finding. <laughs> anyway, this is a two-parter because I am planning on releasing a little art book with all of these. The reason for the art book is because I was putting these out and putting them up as prints and I had more and more requests to make it possible to purchase everything all at once and instead of having people spend like hundreds and hundreds of dollars on all of the prints because there's like 28 or so of these, I was like, well, maybe it just might be easier to make it into just a little art book. So this video is just me drawing some of the few last dogs for the art book. And then the next video is going to be me putting everything together and I will have a pre-order up and you can order it hopefully once all of that kind of comes together. So with all of that said, all of that out of the way, <laughs> here's just a fun little quick draw, speed draw of me doing one of the lore, one of the dog lores 
This one specifically is from Brazil. It is a, I can't say it in, in Portuguese or Brazilian because um, I don't speak it and I'm gonna butcher it, but in English, I think it translates to water puppy. The lore is that, the lore is that this small dog lives in or around the rivers and she has a gold little star on her forehead. And if you spot her, she will give you unfounded riches, apparently. <laughs> they say that you can see her basking in the sun and warming her little white fur. So I decided to base this dog off of the Brazilian Terrier. I put a little star on her forehead and I designed the handler to be a witch who has definitely gotten a bunch of fortune. <laughs> uh, the lore about this dog also says that this dog is only ever female and that she is primarily white. So I felt like the Brazilian Terrier was a good choice because she's like mostly white <laughs> and the star could kind of be like a pattern from her mask and everything on her head. So I think it was kind of a fun little rendition to do. The handler's design was based off of traditional Brazilian dress. The thing I mostly pulled from the traditional Brazilian dress is this very large hip shape. It translated into my mind as kind of like a peplum. I designed this kind of blazer outfit with like a very large peplum and a belt. And then her headdress is inspired also by the head wraps that they wear. I kind of replicated it and then initially I just did a regular headdress with some modifications but I end up turning it into a witch's hat later on because I thought it would be kind of cute to have like the wrap and then a witch's hat right behind it. So those are the design features that kind of inspired her outfit. I wanted to completely decorate her but like in a classy way. Yes I have money but I'm not gonna like completely throw it in your face just kind of flash it in your face a little bit maybe. So I gave her some like nice rings and a diamond cuff link and diamond buttons and diamonds on her belt and like a crystal brooch. And then I end up putting crystals hanging off of her hat. So I just wanted her to be like, yeah, obviously I got some riches cause I found this dog, but also like, I'm not gonna just completely throw it in your face. I'm just gonna let you know that I have money and you can insinuate how much. It's always good practice to flip your work 
and make sure that everything looks good even when it's reversed. This is how sometimes I pick up, you know, issues or errors that I've made. As you can see, I shorten the arm, I fix the shoulder. Um, this is a good way to trick your eye back into looking at it almost as if it's a new piece of art. Something I thought was really cool while I was researching and doing all different kinds of dog folklore throughout the world is there were common themes and it didn't even really matter where they were coming from. Like there was a shared theme across the world, essentially. A lot of myths had stories of dogs chasing the sun and the moon, trying to eat the sun and the moon. A lot of places had myths of black dogs. These took various shapes and sizes, but they all kind of were these spooky black dogs, often with glowing red eyes or glowing yellow eyes. And also another interesting one was the fact that there were a lot of dogs that kind of told of someone's death or was a warning about death. <laughs> so I thought that that was really interesting that these kinds of concepts were shared across cultures and even in places that weren't even near each other, they all kind of had similar stories. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> People have asked me how I color my lines like this. It's very easy. I have all of my line art on a different layer and then I alpha lock it and just color right on over. Simple.
All right, and we're moving on to the next one that I'm doing, which is Hati and Skull. And they are two mythological dogs from the Norse and pagan belief. And these dogs, like I mentioned previously, are one of the types of dogs that like to chase the sun and the moon and try to eat them. <laughs> so I decided to draw them as best embrace and I designed them after the Icelandic sheepdog. Since I already did Fenrir, I made his design and his handler's design more Norwegian inspired. I decided for this one, I would go more Icelandic inspired. So these are based off of Icelandic sheepdogs and the handler's outfit is inspired by the traditional Icelandic garb. Like I mentioned earlier, her outfit is based off traditional Icelandic garb. They have a cute little cap and some of the images I saw had like a pointy hat so I thought she would also make a good like witch design. I took that corset and added it in and just tried to modernize some of the features a little bit more. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but a good way to keep images unified is to use similar colors or the same colors throughout the entire piece. So if I'm using blue, I'm gonna use the same blue from the dog. If I'm using gold, I'm gonna use the same gold from the dog. You know, just share all of those colors throughout the whole entire piece. And with that basically winding down, we are going to jump over to the reveal. I'm going to show you both of the illustrations I did and tell me maybe which one's your favorite.
this has been a pretty fun project to work on. I'm proud of myself that I was able to get so many out for this Quack. month, even though I started late, and even though there's not technically 31, but that's okay. I did as many as I could, and the fact that I got like 20 something, I don't know, I have to count, uh, is still, I'm proud of myself for that one. Uh, let me know if you are excited for the book and if you want to pre-order it. Um, hopefully it'll be ready in time for orders for Christmas. Uh, with that, have a nice day, get some sleep, eat a good meal, and draw a fun picture. Bye-bye!